49 years of training, 49 years of training in the martial arts. Um, and I've been shocked five times, five times, almost 50 years of training in the martial arts, and I've been shocked five times. In this particular video, I'm going to share those five times with you. I'm going to, you will learn something from it. I'm sure you will. You'll learn what to expect when you train in a new martial art. You'll learn something about these martial arts. When I say shock, before I go into it, I want to tell you what I mean. They were times, some of them were instances where I felt incompetent. Some of them were times where I felt hopeless. They were all checks on my ego. All five times. So here we go. I started boxing when I was nine years old. That wasn't a shock to me. And it wasn't a shock to me because I had watched other fights. I kind of, I saw people boxing in my neighborhood. I kind of knew what to expect. What essentially was a problem for me when I started boxing was I was forced to box the very people who were bullying me in the neighborhood. So when it came down to fear, having to deal with my fear, uh, so much so that I felt like passing out a lot of times. I was so afraid. I know it may be hard for some people to believe, but my family and my closest friends from way, 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 way back, they know this to be true. So, um, suffering from that kind of fear, yes, that was something I had to deal with, but I knew what to expect from boxing. I wasn't shocked the first time until I went out for the wrestling team in my high school. When I went out for the wrestling team, prior to that, I had thought that basically, you know, all you do, you play around, you try to lift each other up. You know, we all heard of the body slam. Uh, I first started wrestling when I was 15 uh, in 10th grade. And um, essentially, you know, I didn't think, I thought that, you know, you had breaks in between. And I just, I knew it was, you could get tired but I didn't know it was grueling. Well, when I went out for the wrestling team, the team had already been established. It was already a very good team. Not only wasn't I the first reserve, but I was the second reserve. So what I mean by that is not only wasn't I a starter, but if the starter got hurt, I wasn't even next in line. After about uh, two, three months, I actually was the first reserve. Eventually, I was able to co-start with uh, the person in my division. And that basically came from me learning what wrestling was, how to shorten the learning curve, and I will share that with you in another video. But I was shocked for the first time when I started wrestling. The sheer exhaustion that you suffer from trying to get a person down who is determined to stay on their feet and is trained to stay on their feet. The sheer exhaustion that you feel when you are uh, avoiding trying to be taken down by someone who is determined to take you down uh, and pin you uh, and has been trained to take you down and pin you. Um, the, the neck exercises, the bridges, the back bends, the burpees. I had never known that kind of exhaustion and that kind of grinding in my life prior uh, to that at the age of 15. Now some people might say, well you were young, but understand again, I started boxing when I was nine. So we're talking about six years of training. And I had not known that kind of uh, grind, that kind of passing out time of kind of fatigue, that kind of seeing three people in front of you, that kind of fatigue and exhaustion up until that point. So that was the first time that uh, I was shocked. I also was shocked by the technicality of wrestling. Prior to that, again, you're pushing each other, you're picking each other up, you're doing this kind of street type of thing. Um, not, not a great deal of technique, not a great deal of polish anyway. I was surprised to see, to learn how really technical uh, wrestling actually is. The second time I was shocked was when I started training in karate. 
Now, most of you know that I talk about the 70s karate. And I, if there's one thing that irritates me to the point of really hallucinating almost, is when people talk about what karate is and what it isn't, and they're too young to freaking know. You know, I can look at people and see they're 30 years old, you know, uh, in the suburbs of America. You don't know what the hell karate is. You have no idea what karate is. Unless you've gone to Okinawa, right? If you were 30, 32, 33, you know, you possibly, let me just say you possibly, it's quite possible, you have no idea what the hell karate is. So it irritates me when I see people, especially from the United States, where it's a culture, of gun, a gun culture, where the people know the least really about hand-to-hand, -hand, right? We're not talking about the UK, and they're talking about karate, because they have no idea what they're talking about. Needless to say, the second time I was shocked was when I started training karate, so I'll tell you why. This was in the, in the 70s, and it's around 74, 70, well, actually around 77, and um, we couldn't afford pads. Most of us were what people would call poor, uh, you know, and really when you look at how much we ate and the food, and, and I, you know, all of my friends were loved by their parents. I was adored by my parents. We had great childhoods, but economically we would be considered poor. Uh, so, but we, so we couldn't afford pads. Entering into karate, in the ghetto, not being able to afford pads, having a gi, um, I realized that was another shock. That was another shock. And again, here's the reason. I didn't realize that almost every day I would be in pain. I did not realize that a broken nose was, did not mean that you didn't train. It meant you didn't spar. I didn't realize that a broken toe didn't mean you didn't train. It meant you didn't kick. I didn't realize that a broken finger didn't mean you didn't train. It meant you didn't punch. That was the first time that I realized how difficult it is, but how important it is to develop pain tolerance. It was a shock to my system. To throw a kick at someone, they block it with their elbow, and you hear the crack, you feel the pain, but you are expected to continue. That day, and the next day you're supposed to train, which is usually if you train on a Monday, you would train on a Wednesday. If you train on Tuesday, you would generally train on Thursday, and generally Saturday was open class for all, you know, for everybody, if you wanted to come in. Tournament day, you better be there. Sometimes if you knew somebody who had, who had the key to the dojo, then they would open up on a Sunday. But that was the first time that I had to deal with feeling like you wanted to die every day and be expected to show up to train even though that was the case. The kind of pain tolerance that I learned in the ghetto learning hardcore karate with no pads on your hands, no pads on your feet, barely a mouthpiece, because most of us didn't even wear mouthpieces. Um, that was the second time that I was absolutely shocked and felt in spite of my boxing, even in spite of my wrestling, that I was starting all over. Not just learning a new martial art, but just learning to just become a fighter. Prior to that, I thought I was. I realized that I wasn't. The third time that I was shocked was when I started training in Kyokushin Karate. And this was in 1991. I had seen, I had heard about Kyokushin Karate, the founder of uh, 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 the martial art that Masoyama uh, founded, uh, quite possibly the hardest style of karate. It's derivatives of Kyokushin, Ashihara, Enshin, um, Shin Kyokushin, uh, Oyama karate. These are also, these are derivatives, and these are also very hardcore uh, styles of karate. Prior to that, me training karate actually had me fighting, training in Shotokan. So most of the attacks were from about two, three feet out. 
I was attacking from two to three feet out, they were attacking from two to three feet out, etc. It wasn't this face-to-face. -face. In boxing, it was face-to-face, -face, but it wasn't constant. It wasn't constant. You weren't expected to constantly, uh, to constantly uh, clash. You had some boxers, people who boxed, and, and they would move around. It was understandable. Uh, underst it was understandable that they would move around. Kyoko Shin is right in your face. And not only is it right in your face, but there's leg kicks, which I had never experienced before. I had never experienced someone kicking my legs before. And you feel helpless when you are having your legs kicked and it's hurting, and you haven't been trained on how to defend them, and you haven't been trained on how to absorb them. That was the first time that I felt incompetent because I thought I had been training in karate, but I had been training in one style of karate. And when I got to Kyokushin, I really realized that there were other things I just simply didn't know. I was very uncomfortable with being that close and punching, 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 leg kick, punching, 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 leg kick. It took me two to three months of constant throwing leg kicks a hundred times, uh, probably 500 times in a day with both legs to, to actually get used to throwing leg kicks in combination with my punches. The one thing though that set me for a spin in Kyokushin was when I was asked if I wanted to spar black belt style. Now, for those of you who know about Kyokushin or, or Oyama derivatives, then you know black belt style is to the body, bare knuckle, uh, nothing on your hands, nothing on your feet. So I decided I would give it a try. I have never felt that incompetent in my life, that helpless in my life. I had good boxing hands, so I was hitting the guy a lot in the body. But the way his hands and his feet worked together was frustrating for me. It was extremely frustrating for me. Finally, I was able to put my hands and my feet together well. But then there was also the issue of never knowing what it was like to have my hands and my feet swell up in karate training. In karate, I would hurt my toe every now and then. Uh, I would hurt my finger every now and then with a punch in Shotokan training. But in Kyokoshin, literally every day, my feet were swollen and my hands were swollen. Not to mention my calf, not to mention my thighs being bruised, being bruised in my torso from the, from the sparring. Kyokoshin to this day remains one of the things that has made me uh, the martial artist that I am today. And I recommend that if anyone gets a chance to train in Enshin Karate, Ashihara Karate, Oyama Karate, or Kyokushin Karate, I recommend taking the class, a few classes in it, even if it's for six months. Uh, at least do some sparring with pads on, uh, if you prefer. Uh, they do allow you to do it, right? Uh, and, and see what, it, what it's really like. Um, but Kyokushin, the pain involved, the, the need to incorporate your feet with your hands uh, up close um, uh, are things that uh, I didn't know. It was a shock to my system. I'm glad I overcame it and wasn't discouraged and continued to train that way. It made me a better martial artist. The fourth time getting this finished up was around 1992. And I was training in Kyokushin Karate, and on Fridays we would have sparring day. Um, <clears throat> there was an organization called K1 that was being started, and it was being started by a Kyokushin Karate instructor. And uh, we were told that on Friday we would have some guests. And these particular people were coming from Thailand. Well, I didn't know much about Muay Thai. In fact, I don't think I knew anything about Muay Thai in 1991. It was before the UFC, which was started in 1993. Maurice Smith, I hadn't heard of Maurice Smith. Uh, arguably the first striker, pure striker, to win a UFC title. Um, black guy. i got to add that because I'm proud of that. Without a doubt, I'm apologetically proud of that. There's a lot of information concerning black martial artists that is just hidden. It's not out, and black people don't dig for it. So whenever I can bring it up, I do. 
But these people were coming from Thailand, and, and they were part of the K-1 organization. The K-1 organization was founded by a Kyokushin fighter, and since we were Kyokushin uh, 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 karate fighters, uh, and, and students, and we had to punch, kick, kick, punch type of thing. They were coming to train with us. The first time I sparred with a Muay Thai fighter was actually, again, uh, one of the times, the fourth time that I was shocked. Um, the devil may care way that they threw their leg kick. Now, Kyoko Shin threw their leg kicks hard. Um, the Muay Thai fighters threw them without any concern for their limb, without any concern uh, that I could see uh, for their breaking their leg or anything of the sort. But the one thing that got me was when they entered into the clinch, there were times that we wouldn't put gloves on and we were kind of just slapped with the open hands so they could work on their clinch and how helpless I felt, even as a wrestler, even as a wrestler, because I hadn't gotten into Greco-Roman at the time, at that time. I was mostly freestyle, collegiate freestyle. I hadn't got interested in Greco-Roman at that point. So most of my takedowns were from the waist down, which is one of the distinctions between Greco-Roman and freestyle. Greco-Roman take most of the takedowns, are, or the takedowns are from the waist up. Dealing with these Muay Thai fighters in the clinch, I realized how much more there was for me to learn. That was an eye-opener, feeling almost like they could maneuver me, like they were a puppet master and I was a puppet. Having boxed, wrestling, karate, kyokushin, and then that time, at that point, feeling again, wow, I still have a lot to learn. The sheer power, the abandon, the unconcern for their leg that they showed when they would slam their leg kicks into my thighs. And then the clinch. In 1991, it was a shock to me. I had never really heard of these people. Uh, nobody really was talking about these people. Um, but I honestly, that was the fourth time that uh, it was a shock to my system. I later became uh, a personal student of one of the fighters that came in there. And all I wanted to do was learn to clinch. And I trained with him uh, two days a week for a year. And then when our job schedules uh, changed, I tried to train with him at least one day a week for, uh, for two years. Okay? And I will tell you that the Muay Thai clinch is something that one should learn. Most people, even in the UFC, only learn the basics and not anything much beyond the rudimentary basics. But K-1 practice with Muay Thai fighters was another experience. The fifth and last time that I was shocked it was when I was watching something. It didn't make me feel incompetent, but I looked and I said, wow. I had been watching, I don't know exactly when this was. It might have been in the 90s, might even 2000. But I remember seeing this individual. And when I saw this individual, I remember saying, whoa, wow. You know, I mean, it, words couldn't describe. I had been watching MMA. I had been cross-training since 1976, literally since 1976. I had been boxing, wrestling, remember that I said this, 76, I'm, by 76 I'm boxing, already boxing for many years, I'm training, I'm um, wrestling. I was cross-training in 76. Me and a few of my friends were cross-training what many of you call mixed martial arts. We were doing that in 76. And I'm not proud of it, but one of the reasons why I could not go to a university, even though I was given a scholarship to go to a university for wrestling, one reason why I couldn't go was because someone had bothered my sister, and I, as a, as a, a, a juvenile at the time, um, I had to go back and forth to court for aggravated assault. Uh, and the way that I was assaulting him was I had the seatbelt, uh, he was on the ground, and I was banging on him when the police came. Um, I was actually, my ground and pound is a big reason why, what, people, what you call ground and pound was a big reason why I was not able to go to university uh, on a scholarship for wrestling. All right, so I've been cross-training from 76. So I saw a mixed martial artist. But when I saw this gentleman, it opened my eyes and I had that wow moment. Again, I didn't feel incompetent, but I was shocked. And he would always be the picture of sheer brutality in the cage. When I saw Pride and saw Vandele Silva, Vandele Silva, the axe murderer, 
for the first time in his prime, I really was speechless. Because he exuded everything that a person who is a fighter, almost sadistic in their approach. Um, when I had the idea of a fighter, a gladiator, it was Vandele Silva. Uh, or Wanderley Silva, however, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, he remains the picture for me, not of the greatest technician, but of the most pure gladiator I have seen in mixed martial arts. So, those are the five times I was shocked and had to recoup and had to uh, look at my martial arts training, got frustrated, had to realize that I didn't know everything. When I was wrestling, when I went out for wrestling, when I first entered into karate, the pain that I had to withstand, uh, the pain tolerance I had to withstand and was expected to withstand. Kyoko Shin, uh, the swelling of my legs, of my feet, uh, blood clots, bruises, um, putting the hands and the feet together, which is something I had never been forced to do. Uh, training with Muay Thai fighters, meeting them for the first time and uh, seeing really how advanced uh, their clinch actually is um, and the mindset that they bring to, to their techniques and particularly uh, their, their kicks, uh, their roundhouse kicks. And fifth was seeing Wanderley Silva, or Wanderley Silva. Seeing him for the first time uh, was in how he approached win or lose. As you know, people, I am not about whether someone wins or loses. I mean, their approach is what matters to me. And to this day, there has not been anyone, in my opinion, who exudes a uh, gladiator, the gladiator mentality, like Vondelay Silva. Okay? So those are my five major experiences in 49 years of martial arts, training in 10 martial arts. Uh, my name is Safe Carmen Walker, Encyclopedia of Martial Arts. I'll see you next week.